Good morning. Welcome to Unity of Dallas where the doors are wide open, our hearts are wide open. We are here today to love each other and to celebrate. Amen? Amen. Okay. I'm Ann and... My name is Alex Fowler. <laughs> you notice that the twins are back. <laughs> same age, same size, same height, the, the twins are back. So we're excited that you're here today to celebrate the 4th of July Independence Day weekend with us. And so let's open with our opening statement. Join us, please. There is only one presence and one power active in my life and in the universe. God, the good, omnipotent. So last week I was in Washington, D.C., and I missed everything that happened. So tell me about it. Well, last week was kind of a calmer week. But, uh, on Wednesday, RG2 had our first kind of Kickstarter event. We had Roy Rivers come in, and it was a really fun fundraiser and kind of a time to socialize and jam with everybody. Uh, our first fundraiser ended up getting over $800, so thank you all so much. We, uh, we could not get RG2 off the ground without y'all's help, so we really, really appreciate everything you've done to support us, uh, both financially and spiritually, in every way possible so far. Tell everybody real quick kind of what RG2 means. So RG2 stands for Regeneration Group, and you'll notice on one of the slides it has D tacked on there, and it's just for Dallas, because we're hoping to make this kind of a, a nationwide thing, kind of like YOU is. So pretty much 20s and 30s folks. Good. Young adults, millennials, whatever you want to call it. Some of us have already outgrown it, but. <laughs> and we also have some upcoming highlights, and I want to tell you all a little bit about that. Uh, many of you have heard Michael Murdad before, and um, the first question I got when I sent it to my friends that he's coming is, is he going to talk on Sunday? You're going to have to come when he speaks on Tuesday night, and that is on the 19th. So mark your calendars. He is a great speaker and a great spiritual person. Uh, Dottie Gandy, who was here first ser service and is one of the Dolly Mama's prayer group. Uh, Dottie's doing a workshop which was rescheduled to Sunday the 17th at 1 o'clock. We seem to have a better job of getting you to stick around if we do it on Sunday after church. Getting you to come on Saturday, or we're going to have to kind of work on that. So tell me about the food drive. Well, we have a food drive coming up for the uh, North Dallas Food Bank. Yeah. I apologize. Uh, and it's through next Sunday. So if you want to uh, contribute to that, contact Ann Drum. And I know I just talked about RG2, so I'm not really going to expand upon that too much, but I do want to talk about what YOU is doing today. They're leaving for IYOU, which is International Youth of Unity, and it's a week-long event. Normally their events are uh, Friday through Sunday. We have one event that's Thursday through Sunday, but this one is Monday through Friday, and it's held at Unity Village. So it's about as spiritual as it gets, as far as rallies are concerned. Uh, and it's really close to my heart because I was an international ambassador my senior year, so I got to help plan this event, uh, last year's event. So I'm super excited because James gets to go to this and he has absolutely no idea what he's in store for. <laughs> and the Art of Living? So we have the Art of Living, which is a four-day workshop, um, the 28th through 1st, July 28th through 1st. So make sure you look into that. Thank you. Um, and we have our bulletin's in our hands, and I just want to remind you, take it home with you, don't leave it here, because you can look through it during the week, and if you want to come for a class or learn something about what's going at Unity of Dallas, this is your, I laughed and said to the earlier group, I don't know if any of you ever watched Joel Osteen, who I think is a unitic and doesn't know it. You know, if he would quit talking about Satan, we'd be, he'd just be one of us, okay? <laughs> And he opens with, this is my Bible, and I'm opening with, this is our bulletin. <laughs> Be sure that you take it home with you. All right, so congregational greeting, and that means a handshake, a hug, a kiss, or a fist bump. God, written by 
like Ken Sutherland. Thank you, Ken Sutherland. Now we'll go into our morning meditation. If you will, close your eyes. Take your left hand put it over your heart and as you breathe in just breathe in through your nose and feel your belly fill with air feel the heart beat breathe in through your nose feel your belly fill with air exhale
exhale. Go to a, a memory. Think of a great moment in your life. Something you're very proud of. Something that made you feel the best you've ever felt. What were you thinking? What were you saying in your mind? Was it another person speaking with you? Were you in an action? What did the air and the sky feel like? Breathe it in. Feel it internalize. Feel the beating of your heart. And open your eyes and come to the present. One of the greater moments in my life, I'll never forget. I was in Italy and I was wearing this uniform right here. This uniform, it has an American flag on it and we're celebrating Independence Day this weekend. I was representing my country in the Masters World Championships of track and field. And it was the relay. It was the four by 400 meter relay. And we're all in a pen, us, Great Britain, Italy, the Netherlands. And when I looked down at my jersey and I saw my bib, it didn't have a number. It said United States. We were about to walk out on that track and we were gonna run our heart out for what it said on that bib, what it says across my jersey, USA. There was a moment where it got real. All of us in there, we knew what we were running for. I was running for my home. I was running for my flag. And that is something greater than me. There is a man who wrote us a national anthem. That is Francis Scott Key. And he said, I wanted to put pen to paper about how I felt about my country and my flag. Where was he when he wrote this? He was in prison. He was in a cell. He was being detained by the British. Francis Scott Key was trying to get his friend out of jail. He went to the British, said, hey, can you let my friend out of jail? They said, sure. But along the way, Francis Scott Key, he found out that the British were planning to attack Fort McHenry through the port of Baltimore. So they had to detain him. They couldn't let him go back to the American ships. The attack begins. And through the night, he was not sure if he would still see his American flag standing on that flag post as he looked through the night and in the morning. Would the American flag, would that flag still be standing? Would the country that he believed in, would it still be there. I was at the Texas Rangers game and I heard the Star Spangled Banner and I really listened to the words. And so I looked them up. I wanted to read them. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming? That's a question mark. Is it still going to be there? Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight over the ramparts I was like, what's Ramparts? That's Battlefield. We watched, we're so gallantly streaming. And the rockets, red glare, the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. That means there was a heck of a war going on. The British, they were bringing in the bombs. They were looking to blow it to pieces. But through those bombs and through the explosion, what could he see? He still saw that standing. Oh, say, does that star-spangled banner yet wave over what? The land of the free and the home of the brave. Oh, on the shore, the dimly seen through the mist of the deep, that's the ocean, where the foe's haughty host and dread silence repose. Haughty host, that's a pretty strong word. He's saying those British, they're arrogant. 
That's what he saw him as, arrogant. What is that which the breeze over the towering steep, as it fitfully blows, half conceals, half discloses? Now it catches the gleam of the morning first beam. Sunlight starting to come. It's still there. In full glory, reflected, now shines in the stream. Tis the star-spangled banner. O oh, long, may it wave over the land of the free and the home of the brave. And there is that band who so vauntantly swore that the havoc of war and the battle's confusion, a home and a country should leave us no more. It's still going to be there. Their blood was washed out, has washed out their foul footsteps, pollutions. No refuge could save the hireling or the slave. The British, they went and hired German mercenaries. The slave, it was other American sailors that they took captive and put them to work and made them fight for the British. From the terror of flight or the gloom of the grave and the star-spangled banner in triumph doth wave over the land of the free and the home, home of the brave. Oh, thus be it ever, when free man shall stand between their loved home and the war's desolation. Blessed with victory and peace, may the heaven-rescued land, he's saying the hand of God is on us. Praise the power. And that's a capital P. Once again, he's referring to God that hath made and preserved us a nation. Then conquer we must when our cause is just. That's important. When our cause is just. And thus be our motto. In God is our trust. And the star-spangled banner in triumph shall wave over the land of the free in the home of the brave. There's a word, and he said it six times. He said home. When I was over there in Italy, and I looked at this flag... I know what home is, and home is my identity. I run for something greater than myself. I run for a hope. In this nation, it's built on hope. As I looked at, around at the people when I was at that Texas Rangers game, 200 years later, I'm hearing the Star Spangled Banner, and I just wonder, do we still feel as passionate as Francis Scott Key did then, today? Thank you. Good job, Marcus. I didn't mean for you to take my job forever. <laughs> Getting me all emotional, stuff like that. I asked Marcus to share that story. He shared a little version of that at Toastmasters here at Unity, Jim Bourne's class on Wednesday night. And it touched me because, well, it made me pause and ask myself and be accountable, really, for the words of that song because I never really fully realized the meaning of the words and the spirituality behind the words that were involved. So thank you for that, and I keep imagining you running with that whole get up, because you said my uniform in Italy. So, but what you uh, may have been missing is one of these. This is something the uh, YOU gave me today. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do with it. I, I think I'm supposed to put it on my nose, but do I show up at Unity Village with it? Is that why they gave it to me? They thought it was really funny, and then Alex says I don't know what I'm getting involved in on this trip. So, the other thing I was given was this right here is the, in case you haven't seen the unveiled Unity of Dallas Youth International Rally t-shirt. It's pretty nice, it says Dallas YOU back there. So I saw you eyeing it, don't uh, covet my t-shirt. If you haven't been able to get in the 4th of July spirit yet, I invite you to look at Robert Edwards' socks 
uh, that he's wearing. They're very, very patriotic, and I got to share it with you. At the nine o'clock, he decided after we started that it would be a good idea to run with the American flag into the fellowship hall. And it was so awesome. I mean, he was just like, it was like slow motion. He was just running across. And it, it was really, really good. Uh, and I also want to thank Ken Sutherland for writing that amazing song. That was... Uh, it was my first time to hear that. So it was, it was oh, love it. Get the God bumps all over, all over my skin. Speaking of skin, I want you to do a little exercise right now. Just paint yourself. You don't have to do it under here. I know some people. Just, just paint, your, paint your skin. It's almost if you had that moment before where you just so many good things are happening. You just can't believe it. Like, is this really happening? Yeah. And I've heard people say that about all the great and the good that we have going on here at Unity of Dallas. So there are those moments, and then there's moments where you're kind of pinching your skin going, oh, am I really here? I wish, I, wasn't. I wish it wasn't happening to me. I can't believe what this person said to me. How could they say that to me and hurt my feelings that way? Then also, maybe sometimes your, uh, your skin is thick. That's good for, like we said, Texas heat, and to, uh, to not be personally offended by things, but sometimes maybe your skin is too thick to where you get a compliment and it bounces right off of you. You don't believe it. You don't accept it. This was our conversation that we were having, Katie King and Carolyn Barrow, uh, literally around the water cooler and the vat of coffee that we had, talking about how we could say, I love your new haircut, and you're like, oh no, she cut it too short. Well, what about your new dress? I love your new dress. Oh, this old thing, I got this at Goodwill. You've seen that before. It's so hard to just say what? Thank you. Thank you. And in case you've never said those words before, one more time. Thank, Thank you. you. Oh, it just feels so good. We've been doing a series. We actually started last week, the series on the four agreements. It's actually now five agreements. This is a New York Times best-selling book for seven years in a row, the four agreements. Written by Don Miguel Ruiz, and then he came out with the fifth agreement, and his son helped him co-write it, Jose, and it's a really good agreement as well. It is sort of really hand in glove, I find, with the unity teachings and with much of Scripture. The first thing we covered last week was be impeccable with your word. Be impeccable with your words. Heard a man or I read about a man and he said, I like to just say the first thing that comes to my mind without even thinking about it. I want to be as surprised as everybody else by what comes out of my mouth. <laughs> Have you known people like that? It's like, hey, buddy, just take a breath before you say that again. We have to use discernment in what we say because our words have power and that's what this agreement is about. He says here, be impeccable with your words. Speak with integrity. Avoid using the word to speak against yourself or to gossip about others. Use the power of your word and move it into the directions of truth and love. And we always hear this and it's like, yeah, no, don't lie. I shouldn't gossip. But when you reflect on your day, when you reflect on your week, can you truly say that you stepped in your full power into your Christ-like truth and did that? We're humans, so sometimes we don't uh, move our conversation to the direction of, of, of love. And what Don Miguel calls that is really sinning against yourself. It's going against yourself, which is what the Latin word, the root word for impeccable means is peccatus, which means sin, which we know from early scripture means missing the mark, missing the mark to err. So when we err in our consciousness, when we err and we miss the mark, then it's said that we are, M means against, so we are working against ourselves. That is what the first agreement discusses. 
interesting things happen when people don't follow the first agreement. It causes the need for the second agreement, the second agreement. And let me set up the second agreement for you a little bit today. That's mostly what we're talking about over the next 15 minutes is the second agreement. Let me tell you. Okay, so one thing I realized that I really like about Dallas is the movie theaters are awesome. There's so many of them. And my favorite is Studio Grill. Because you can walk in, you can push that little button. And what happens when you push that little red button? Food and beverages come out. It is awesome right there in the middle of the show. I love it. And then you get really excited and you lean and you hit the button. And guess what happens? Somebody still comes out. There's no food. But they come out anyway. And I've done that many times. There you are. You're walking into Studio Grill to see a movie, you're not sure exactly what it's about, and all of a sudden, the credits come up, and it's your name. You're the star of this movie. Then your co-stars are shown, and it's your uh, parents, and it's your friends, and the movie begins, and what you find out is this movie's awesome. I mean, you were so engrossed in it, you're like, this is a movie about me. I couldn't have written it better myself. I couldn't have directed it better myself. This is great. In fact, at the end, you just give yourself a big standing ovation. (laughs) You're like, I know this film. I love it. And you get so fired up and inspired, you decide to uh, sneak in, like you used to do as a kid, or last week, uh, (laughs) to the double feature. You want to see another one. Now you walk into that film. And once again, it's your movie. Except in this movie, it's your parents that are the stars. And you're the co-star. But it's still about your life. This is still a movie about your life. Except the opening scene is different. And then the next scene is different. And then the next scene, and you're sitting there getting angry because you're like, I don't know who they're talking about in this film. This film has nothing to do with me. I mean, it's very loosely based on, the, based on the truth here. Who wrote this junk? So you grab your 50-gallon drum of refillable popcorn, <laughs> and you're out of there, and you go into the next theater, where, lo and behold, it's also a film about your life. But fortunately, in this film, the star is your beloved. It's your sweetie pie. It's your, I told the first group, I learned a new pet name called Kelp Cake. If you've seen Finding Dory, Kelp Cake. So try that on your uh, beloved for Fourth of July, see how that goes. So your Kelp Cake comes out, and it's even worse. I mean, it's an atrocity. I mean, they know you. How could they say these things? You start really getting upset. It's just bubbling up beneath your skin and you're like I got to get out of here before I say something to somebody I shouldn't say and you leave before the opening credits even finish and you're out of there then you take it out on somebody because that's not how it should be so what you find out is that you are taking this movie personally you're taking what somebody else sees somebody else's movie and what they're projecting upon you very personally. That's the second agreement. Don't take anything personally. Nothing others do is because of you. What others say and do is a projection of their own reality, their own dream. When you are immune to the opinions and action of others, you won't be the victim of needless suffering. Have you ever been in, I mean, if you, if you can relate to what I'm saying, Don't take it personal. (laughs) But have you been there to where you did have needless suffering and you realize it down the road, you're like, why did I let that bother me so much? Why did I let my coworker, my boss, my neighbor upset me so much it wasn't worth it? If you've been there, give me a hand. Yeah, and if if, uh, you didn't raise your hand, the third and fourth agreement's next week. So we'll... (laughs) Because if, if you don't really perfect one agreement, it leads to the next, leads to the next, leads to the next. Lots of scripture on this. 
idea of your reality, your dream, the illusion that maybe you're living. Sometimes we call that being in the, in the matrix, right? Needless suffering, who really represented this idea the most? Who fully embodied this idea of, I'm not, I, I'm not going to, I'm going to stand in my truth, no matter what people say about me, and be who I am? Jesus. The first agreement, uh, having a conversation on the way here this morning with somebody who said to me that, you know, I like to tell people how I feel about my spirituality right up front. I don't mind talking about it. I'll let them know where that line in the sand, where my boundaries are, because I'm trying to be authentic with my life and be who I am, who I really am. And I think that the examples in Scripture really go to that because it would have been so easy for Jesus to say, oh no, I know the Romans are going to persecute me, but I can't believe the Jews are saying this about me. It's so not true. And then just run off. But he faced it because that was his to do. This is one of my favorite, um, this is one of my favorite verses here in Ecclesi- Ecclesiastes, where it says, also take not Heed unto all words that are spoken. Lest thou hear thy servant curse thee. Lots of these and thou's there. But heed not unto all words that are spoken. In the Star Spangled Banner, you mentioned slaves. But the idea with this particular metaphor is that if you have servants or anybody in your house that's there all the time, that see everything you do, and hear the words that you say, they develop their own interpretations, and they're going to go and tell people, well, you got to get over it. It's just human nature. It's just going to happen. You can't let it destroy your day and take you out of spirituality and get you into anger. Because that's really what happens. If we don't follow this agreement, we find ourselves getting upset when we take it personally. We find ourselves getting angry It's hard to stay connected to source. It's hard to stay connected to God when you are feeling that anger bubbling up, when your skin is not thick enough. Something I really liked about what you said was Francis uh, Scott Key addressed spirituality in it, and the key, sort of the apex of it, was when he said, in God, I trust. In God, I trust. When people pray, when people uh, cry, even when you kiss, what do you usually do? Usually close your eyes. Why? Why do you think people do that? To go within, right? To go to the heart, like in the meditation today. To go to the heart. To to block out the exterior. And you can actually do this with your eyes open too. Generally, people go inside to try to connect in that moment. And if you do that as your first step of this agreement, then you're much less likely to go to that anger place. Much less likely There was a lady, and and much less likely to start making up your story or your movie about that other person that just said that to you. Sometimes I may not even say it. You just know they're thinking it. There's a story about this lady who was getting a medal, a medallion at an AA meeting one night. And for her to get this next medal, she had to talk to somebody that she was uncomfortable talking to. Have you had that experience where you maybe, you you, you have to go talk to someone, but maybe you're a little nervous or shy or whatever about going and talking to, somebody at the nine o'clock said, you know, when you guys handshake and hug, I'm getting better with it. But it was so uncomfortable for me at first to go and do that uncomfortable, that, that thing. It's especially uncomfortable if you don't even like that person. In this particular AA story, she really did not like this woman. I mean, that lady, every meeting, she would just stand over there with her perfect hair and her perfect clothes all dressed to the hilt 
and looking beautiful and everything, and she just thought she was haughty was the word you said that the British, right? Haughty. And she knew, too, because sometimes the lady just kind of walked by and give her that, that glance over right there. Uh-huh, mm-hmm. So her skin was just getting thinner by the second, and she certainly didn't want to have anything to do with her until she had to because she had to get the medal. So she went over, finally, outside of her circle of comfort, and she talked to this woman. What do you think she found out? That woman had just been standing there all those weeks. She had never said nothing about her. She had never hurt her. She had never been impeccable with her word. And maybe she gave her a look or whatever, but you never exactly know what a look means. And we'll get to that in a minute. It's hard to connect to God when you're angry. It's hard. Many of you make a difference in your life when you're taking action and you are doing what you are supposed to do. But it's hard. It's hard if you get angry because you took it personal because a lot of times you can't take it back. It's, have you ever been there? You're like, ooh, I wish I could take that back what I said. Amen. Amen. And that's what some of the steps are about today that we're going to go over to not do that. There was uh, someone, a young lady who texted me yesterday and she texted those four that, that four-letter word, help. And usually when that happens, I'm thinking that's a 911. It's, I got to stop everything I'm doing, give her a call. So I called her. I'm like, are you okay? And she said, I'm on a long road trip with my parents. <laughs> and right then I'm thinking, man, I'm just talking about this, the movie. I'm just thinking about the movie that's going to be playing out before her now that she's about to describe in her head. And I was like, what's wrong? What did they say? And she's like, well, they're just really annoying me <laughs> with everything that they're saying. It's not fair. It's absolutely not fair that they're saying this, this, and this, and she's just, they're just really getting on my nerves. What should I do? And I said, well, ooh, I get to put these steps into practice today. I get to see if this really works to you know, what, what we're preaching about today. And we, so we did these steps that I'm going to talk to you but the first thing I told her is you can't be self-righteous about it. I mean, she almost had this a little bit of a superiority thing going on that it was okay, that it was okay to be saying those words about him and to get that angry. So also from the big book in Alcoholics Anonymous, there's a quote, self-righteous anger can also be very enjoyable <laughs> in a perversive way. Some people that seem to just sort of take delight in, you're making me angry, it's okay for me to be angry, so now I'm going to start enjoying it. We can actually take satisfaction in the fact that many people annoy us, for it brings a comfortable feeling of superiority. The first thing we got to do, that first thing that she could do after typing help, is she can go within. In God we trust. In God we trust like in the Star Spangled Banner. Go in, turn within to spirit. Take that breath, set that intention. Yeah, I'm not gonna let that bother me. I'm gonna have thicker skin and say a prayer. Now, not the beseeching prayer, not the, oh God, please change my parents sitting up in the front street, front seat. <laughs> change them, how could they say, what's wrong with these people? People in our political climate now, and I don't really talk about politics behind the pulpit, but I'm not the, behind the pulpit, so I can a little bit, but they, they, each side is like, you know, God, help those people. What's wrong with them? Or as the squirrel puts it, I love this quote right here, oh, Lord, where's my squirrel? Oh, See that prayer pose? Oh, Lord, please help all the stupid people from breeding. We are getting badly outnumbered here. Yeah. We are getting outnumbered, and maybe you feel that way sometimes. There's just so many people around you, and why can't they just get it? Why can't they just get smart? So step one is enter the CCU. Now, really, step one was to go within, turn within. That's where the magic happens. But while you're doing that, you can be honest. 
with God. Be honest with yourself and say, yeah, I don't like this. Maybe what they said to you is totally uncalled for, but it's still their movie. They're still projecting it on you. So I want to be aware, what am I feeling right now? What is this pain I'm going through? And maybe it's somewhere between no pain, like the little egg on the left, all the way to excruciating where you have the crying egg at the end, where you are just distraught. You can't even function because what just happened. Help, the four-letter words. So the CCU is not the critical care unit. But you are going into this place to assess yourself. And right then, you're taking yourself outside of what everybody else is doing and you're going within, which is again, that Christ nature, that Christ light that Jesus Christ embodied. Step two, concentrate on loving the other person. That kind of talks about like plan L a little bit that I talked about a few weeks ago. Begin with love. Can you just stop as you're breathing? and you're being this awareness, and send that person love. That's what I told her yesterday. Send your parents love. See them smiling. See them accepting your love. What happens? Who's blessed when you do that? You are blessed. They're blessed, absolutely, but you are blessed. Like 1 Timothy, right here, there goes my nose, and is it... Is the font getting smaller here? <laughs> See, I heard you, Crystal. Seeing, seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love, means not fake of the brethren. So you're not just faking love, you're going in, closing your eyes, and feeling it. See that ye love one another with a pure heart, fervently, fanning that flame of desire, of that love, that desire to make them feel love, as opposed to whatever movie they got projecting. And again, saying it's not about them, it's not about their movie, but I can control my own feelings. I can control going into this place and concentrate. So that's the second C, The third C is consider asking if there is truly a problem between you. When you come out of this prayer and after sending that person love and light, that might be a good time now that you're breathing again to just ask yourself, consider, is this, are they really feeling this way toward me? Or maybe I've misinterpreted the situation, which gets into step four, which is understanding Which is one of unity's what? Looking at my LUTs, 12 powers or the 12 faculties. And if somebody can, an LUT can tell me which disciple represents understanding. Thomas, Thomas. David Drum, right a surprise. What a surprise that he got. (laughs) It was on the tip of most people's tongue. Well, Thomas was able, the disciple that was possibly most able to see reality despite the present circumstances around, despite what people were saying. So gain that last U of CCU is that to understand that the other person may be reflecting stress, exhaustions, exhaustion or problems. Maybe they're just really stressed out. I know that I've spoken in ways that I'm not proud of before, especially if I'm hungry or tired. I may just be a little bit stressed out. It doesn't happen very often, but we've all been there. And later on, I wish I didn't say it. But if I just would have stopped and did these steps, the CCU, and understood that, hey, maybe they're having a bad day. So why am I going to continue uh, trying to handle the problem at the level it was created? Second, understand that maybe you are not seeing things clearly or maybe you have misinterpreted something. That happens a lot in group dynamics, organizations and churches where there's all this communication flying around and somebody just misinterprets. So at that point, we can just go and say, hey, I'm not sure what you meant by that. Could you uh, clarify? I had a neighbor 
of mine, uh, of ours, uh, come to me and say that the other day. It's like, what did you mean what you, when you said yesterday, James, about this and this and this? I so appreciated him coming to me before running with that story. And it also gave me a chance to reflect on maybe I could have said it in a little bit better way. Understand that you may be just too sensitive. The skin's not quite thick enough. Sometimes I think we've all been just a little bit too sensitive in the way we take something. And then the last one, understand that sometimes people just may not like you. I know that's hard to believe, but that happens. My understanding of what truth is really deepens and directs my life. I think I'll get a chance this week to consider this uh, as I go to the convention. I'll probably get a chance to practice these agreements as I'm riding with whatever 10 kids in a van for eight hours with or without my nose on, take my name and pray for me. But I'm probably going to get a chance at some time to practice, see how thick my skin is. And I want to be, I want, the last step really is I want to always have an affirmation that means something to me that can fan that flame of love toward all people. Hanging in various hallways at Unity Village, which is the Unity World Headquarters, if this is your first time here, is this quote, and it was by Charles Fillmore, the co-founder of Unity, where he says, "Not can disturb me, for Christ is my peace and my poise. You can just say, "Not can disturb me. As Fillmoreans speak there, older speak, but it's kind of fun. Not can disturb me unless I let it. Not can disturb me if my skin is the right amount of thickness, to use that metaphor. Peace is what I desire. Peace and poise. You will notice your life changing as you practice this. Would you have appreciated being able to perfect these agreements and these steps when you were youth, when you were in the YOU, or when you were young, if you weren't in YOU? Do you think that our young adults that are here can benefit from getting it now? Would you like to be able to go back and tell yourself, man, you didn't need to get so upset when that person said that to me or you or whatever? Our young adults, we're trying to, uh, we are forming this, this group that Alex spoke about because unity is relevant in the world and we want more and more of the, the younger adults, the 20-something and 30-something, carrying this into their, with their families and into the world to truly impact and, and have that change of collective consciousness. The other night, we got to do a consciousness conditioner. We got to go to uh, this concert that we had. We put it together in a week <laughs> in a true unity fashion. Some people said, you guys can't plan this in a week. And we said, we're not going to take that personally. <laughs> we're going to make it happen anyway. And Roy Rivers was awesome. He was just so good. Yeah, he was. He was so good with the, 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 uh, with the folks that were there. We had a full room. Uh, of, of people to really honor and get this young adult group kick-started because that's, they say, whoever they are, that that's the toughest area to grow in a spiritual community is the young adults because they either know it all or, or they're, just, they're, they're spiritual but not religious and they just don't want that dogma and people pointing at them. So I get that. So we had so much fun and the young adults bonded and they had some deeper uh, conversations and and uh, we had a, a Evelyn's son up there playing bass. So because some of you weren't there, to wrap up, it just so happens that Nikki and I, with our cell phones, took some video. And Evelyn was nice enough at the last minute to uh, cut it together. And you are going to see something here. Even, even more so, probably not quite as good as carrying the American flag, but you will see Mr. Edwards play something called Spoons. And if you want spoon lessons, yeah. So can we dim these lights? Is that possible to dim these lights? You're going to see some boot scooting. You'll see a little bit of somebody called it bug dancing. I'm not sure what that is. 
Uh, but you're going to see the, uh, the, the Roy Rivers and the backup singers, we're loosely calling the Unitics. But Roy, William, Roy, Rivers, Roy Rivers said, Roy Rivers said, hey, we, I don't care. He goes, if you want to have a jam session, that's, it's all good. And that's what made me happy because when I asked him, I started creating a story. Like, oh man, this thing is a week away. I shouldn't ask him that. But that was my movie starting to project. Instead, I just asked him and he said, yeah, we can have a jam session. So Mary and Jonathan uh, Kreider are the stars of this particular video. And as I close, I just want to say thank you all and enjoy the short video. Thank you. Happy 4th of July.
Love you guys.